Warning, this video might mess you up. I'm serious, really. We're about to explain the nature of the demonic hellscape that is the tree of death, counter to the tree of life. However, the process of making this video was a nightmare. So many things went wrong. Just as often people feel that horror movie sets are cursed, we experienced it personally. Even our most skeptical team members noticed that things got weird around this video. And so we're extending the warning to you. If you watch this video, weird things might happen in your life. And we recommend that you burn some sage, call in your protective angels, and activate your Merkaba before watching. And then do it again when you're done. You can pause the video now if you need to. Okay, all ready? Here we go, you've been warned. It's been a while since we've jumped into Kabbalah. Let's jump in again, shall we? When exploring this ancient philosophy and map of the layers of existence, there's one major thing we need to cover, and it's really important. Previously, we explored the 10 Sephirot, the emanations of the tree of life, which describe the divinity in every level of creation. However, in the spirit of completeness and understanding, we must cover the reversal of such a system, the Klifot, otherwise known as the tree of death. For the majority of traditional Kabbalistic history, many of the mystical Jewish sects prohibited the Klifot study as it was set in opposition to the natural practical Kabbalah that allowed the practice of white magic, while the danger in interacting with the dark tree and mixing impure magic ensured that it remained a minor and restricted practice in Jewish history. In more recent years, however, with the advent of the Hermetic Kabbalah, the dark realms known often as the Sitra Ara has begun to be explored and interpreted in context. Much like the Sephirot, the Klifot have numerous interpretations of what they are and how they work. A simple explanation of the tree of death is that it's a dark anti-structure or reflection of the tree of life, consisting of the shadow side of creation. Where the 10 Sephira embody divine light and unity, the 10 Klifa embrace all of the conceptions, energies, and forces that were left out of divine order. The word Klifa translates as shell, husk, or peel usually, describing that these may be the forces that block access to the higher worlds unless we attain personal mastery and ascend through them. In the Hermetic traditions, the tree of death is often drawn as a reversed tree of life underneath the primary tree, like so. Loads of ways of interpreting it though, especially its origin. Following people like von Rosenroth and some members of the Golden Dawn, the creation of the dark tree was a result of the Sephira Gevura. As we covered last time, Gevura is the fifth Sephirot and is found within the pillar of severity. It embodies the strength and judgment of the divine, representing the power and resolve required to carry out cosmic law. In some schools of Klifotic ideology, Gevura is seen as the most volatile of the Sephirot. In this interpretation, during the act of creation as divine light came down through the worlds, Gevura began to break away from the tree of life and was forced back into balance by the other realms on the tree. In this narrative, shards or fragments of Gevura's volatile nature were lost into the void beyond the tree and never rejoined it. These fragments rejected the notion of unity and instead created their own realms. You may notice similarities in this story to the fall of Lucifer or the Demiurge, bringing us a more intricate narrative to explore this whole duality consciousness thing. Another alternative explanation is proposed in the Lurianic Kabbalah, and is generally the more accepted theory in the mainstream teachings. Luria believed that the Klifot are metaphorical shells surrounding the realms on the tree of life. In his views, these shells were the source of evil in our world, but were seen more as obstacles to overcome to experience the beauty of each Sephira truly, as they could only outwardly embody God's light. They were said to protect the holiness of each realm, however, and help contain it into a structured form giving the Sephirot a sense of structure. In Lurianic Kabbalah, the creation of the Klifa were said to be a result of something known as the Tzimtzum. In simple terms, this basically describes that God began the process of creation by using his infinite light to create space in which finite and independent realms could exist. 
This was a big shift from the worldview of medieval Kabbalah, which often believed that creation resulted from God expanding its light into the universe. So in this new paradigm of thought, God began to fill each sefirah with divine light, but it was so powerful that the spheres began to break open and flow over, causing all of the spheres from Bina down to Yesod to be shattered. The shards and husks of the broken tree cascaded into lower densities and created the klephot. In some interpretations, human beings too are seen as sparks of light and are stuck inside Malchut, the lowest sefirah, until we work our way back up to rejoin divine order. Through love and repentance, we can return to unity. Supposedly, when all the sparks are freed from the klephot, the messianic era will begin and a new paradigm of love will be ushered in. Where exactly the tree of death is, is another interesting debate. As described before, some believe they are wrappings around the sefirot and others see it as a dark reflection mirroring the tree of life underneath the tree. Following Lurianic thought, the shards of the klipha are located actually inside of Malchut itself and represent our own physical journey to the higher realms. Naturally, however, many Kabbalistic traditions caution someone against working with the klephot, as many may liken it to opening a door to hell filled with demons and monsters. And why on earth would anyone willingly go there? As it's taught in Kabbalah, once your consciousness connects to a klipha, its energies will flow into your life whether you want it to or not. And due to their volatile and extreme nature, they can potentially wreak havoc in your life if you aren't ready to assimilate the energy. One of our writers has known people whose lives have been destroyed and turned chaotic by these energies, with people having lost jobs, broken up with partners, and having drastic personality changes as a result. However, while this is one potent paradigm of thinking, we also must entertain the possibility that angels and demons are all around us anyways. As even modern science describes, there are many dimensions overlaid on top of us. And in that case, it's really only about what frequency we're a match to. You might be familiar with the concept of shadow work, facing our own inner darkness in order to connect with the light. This is the essential nature and pattern of moving through the klephot, a husk around an emanation of God in order to embody higher levels of divinity within us. As we explored in our episode on biology of belief, our paradigm of thinking will affect our experience directly. While the energies of darkness are intense and at times destructive, we should remember that destruction and chaos paves the way for rebirth and new growth, which is a vital part of creation. Even Jesus was said to have descended to hell where he enlightened and liberated many souls there during his three days between his crucifixion and resurrection. And so you'll see, even as we explore these further in this very episode, many of the expressions of this tree we actually see in our society today, meaning that in order to embody light as a species, we have to face our own inner darkness. For us, our experience of the klephot began while creating Patch Tarot. Personally, I felt it was necessary to understand these realms because they seem to be deeply relative to understanding tarot reversals, drawing the cards upside down in a spread, and doing so helped to solidify the reversal meaning, helping you to understand how to transmute these darker forces in life. So if you wanna learn more about that specifically, we have a special video about how to utilize the tarot for life transformation, and you can find a link to that in the comments below. The realms of the klephot are slightly different to the sefirot in that in most descriptions, there are numerous worlds of hell. Sheol, the abyss, Zoa Rotachat, where Gehenna is located, Ber Shachat, the pit of corruption, Sha'are Maveth, the gates of death, and Neshiya, otherwise known as Limbo, where the sefirot are ruled by archangels and populated with various types of angelic entities and orders that correspond to the nature of each sphere, the klephot are believed to be inhabited by demons and other forms of negative entities thought to have been banished from the tree of life during the cleansing process. Each sphere, however, does match up and has a correspondence on each tree. As we touched on earlier in the series, Hebrew doesn't write its vowels, so sometimes there are different transliterations and owing to different traditions, the rulers of each klepha are sometimes different, including the pronunciation of everything. Generally speaking though, the system goes something like this. The first realm is Nehemoth, or sometimes Nama in her guise as the initiator. It means whispers and is ruled by Nama, sister of Lilith. 
It contains all the energies that excite the mind and cause strange desires and corresponds to Malchut and worldly pleasures. Moving down, we go next to Gamaliel, the obscene one, which translates to pollution. Corresponding to Yesod, the Sephirot where boundless forms become matter, this klifa rules over the misshapen and polluted images that produce misshapen results. On a more practical level, it relates to dreams and nightmares, specifically ones that linger and are never put into action. Gamaliel is ruled by the queen Lilith in her harlot aspect, who teaches secrets of sexual alchemy and unhealthy sexual repression. We then come to Samael, the poison of God. Corresponding with Hod, Samael represents the barren desolation of a failed creation. The energies of this realm invoke insanity, doubt, and disbelief in unity, and are ruled by the peacock king, Adramelech. Opposite Samael is the realm of Aarab Zarak, meaning something like ravens of the burning one. This realm corresponds to Netzach, where Netzach embodies openness and natural love. Zarak contains the dark feminine aspect of Venus that confronts you with perverse sexuality and warfare. The demons of this realm are the ravens of death who reject even their own being. Depending on tradition, it is either ruled by Baal Hadad or Tubal Cain, both warrior elites. Coming to the center, we have Tajirian, the realm of disputes. Related to grief and loss, this realm corresponds to Tiferet, where the Sephirot is a place of beauty and glory and the Christ heart of all things. Tajirion is an ugly place where the horrors and abominations of the world hide. Where Tiferet houses the luminous sun, Tajirion is illuminated by the black sun and is ruled by Belphegor, the arch demon of the dead, whose energy embodies loneliness and loss. Moving upwards, we come to Golachab, the true realm of fire. This klifa corresponds to Gevura, so you just know this one's gonna be full of nice and pretty things. Where Gevura embodies righteous strength and justice, Golachab is composed of things that burn to do destruction, enforce their will upon others through strength and domination. It is ruled by Asmodeus and is one of the most destructive realms described by Kabbalah. Opposite to Golachab, we find Gamchikov, sometimes known as Gagshabla, the devourer and smiter. Corresponding with Hesed, where ideas are brought into being from Bina and Hokma in a place filled with creations of truth, love, and peace, Gamchikov is the realm of devouring, which seeks to waste the substance and thought of creation. Energies of greed, destruction, and overthrowing are often present here and are ruled by Astaroth. Satariel resides in the first supernal triangle and is identified as concealment. Where Bina is a Sephira of revealing and formation, embodying the womb of creation for the divine feminine, Satariel conceals the nature of the perfect whole and is arguably the sphere responsible for dualistic energies. The energies of this sphere bring concepts of surrealism and absurdity, where truth is obscured and veiled in night. This realm is often described as looking like a dark labyrinth that the practitioner can easily get lost in. It is often said to be ruled by Lucifuge Rophakale, the dark twin of Lucifer. Opposite Satariel is the realm of Gagiel, sometimes known as Chayadel, the hinderer and confusion of God. Corresponding to Chokma, this klifa is wisdom taken to an extreme and then falsified. Its energies embody lying and material hedonism in opposition to those of reality and wisdom. Theoretically, if Chokmah is not balanced by the force of Bina, it remains a proud, unrestricted energy, too stubborn to be bound by the matrix of the mother, unwilling to take any sense of form. In which case, Chagiel can be thought of as the force that hinders the natural evolution of divine energy flowing down into the creation through pride and egotism and maintains itself in the world of illusions and lies. It is a realm ruled by Beelzebub and Adam Belial, the Lord of Decay and the Lord of Lies. Reaching the crown of the Clefot, we find Taumiel, the twin god. Taumiel represents duality, whereas Keter represents unity. It is the division of that which is perfect only in unity. Some traditions argue that the entities of this sphere tried to invoke the energies of Aleph before being banished and now reject unity. It stands as the gateway to the wider universe beyond it and is ruled by the two kings, Moloch and Satan.
And so you can see the whole exploration of the tree of death, while many people may recoil in fear and disgust, seems to be a very important conversation to be had. Today in society, the principles we are seeing the Clefote stand for are ever present in society. Things like pollution, greed, duality consciousness, or perverse sexual desire. It's something that must be addressed. And thus it seems to be necessary to understand the demons that we're seeking to banish. Much like the tree of life, there is also an intricate system of pathways that describes the flow of energy between them. The sphere of Da'at is also present on the Clefot and fulfills the same role as on the tree of life, an abyss or void and serves to connect the two trees. While the traditional gates to the dark tree lies inside of Da'at, deep within the abyss, there are also ways to access its energies within Malkut. But that's something for our magic series coming down the road. Really, there's so much more to cover, but this should give you a basic introduction to the other side of the tree of life and serve to help you understand where everything exists in balance and correspondence with each other. And so with that, please keep learning and growing and we'll all come to a fuller understanding together.